in, starting at verse 1. Lord God, we are preparing our hearts right now for a word from you. We thank you, Father, that you will speak, Father. We, your people, will hear. I ask now, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 John chapter 10, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. And you ought to shout when you hear something that's already been said this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's read together. Most assuredly, I say to you, who does not enter by the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Year of great deliverance. Come on now, let's keep going. He goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. 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 So 2014, year of great deliverance. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the end from the beginning. The only way we're going to get out is if we can hear his voice. That's the only way we're going to get out if we can hear his voice. Uh, what else did we hear? This morning we heard pastors say, whatever you hear me say, do it. Whatever you see me do, do it. And this morning in prayer, Pastor Vanell said, that the children will not hear the voices that are in this world, but they will only hear the voice of the Lord. Right. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Because I'm going to tell you, God has some great, you can take your seats, God has some great things in store for us. Amen. But whether or not we go in and experience them is going to be directly based on whether or not I can hear his voice. Amen. Here's what I decided. This is personal. I'll just, I'll just testify. I'll, I'll be transparent for a minute. You know, you can be saved and come to church and, and study and be able to comprehend just because you've been taught the basic skills of reading. And, and you can operate in that for a while. And, and that'll keep you on a, a do-good list for a little while. But it'll keep you stuck. See, you'll still suffer the, the same kind of ups and downs, highs and lows, same kind of frustrations that the world you know, suffers because all you know is the little bit you comprehend. Right. And, and the little bit we comprehend is not enough because God's thoughts are so, right. they're so lofty and they're so high in his plans that he has for us, they exceed anything that your mama planned for you. Right. His thoughts, his ways, but he says you guys can come up to that. So here's what I decided. I decided a while ago, Pastor and I made this decision together, that whatever we saw in his word, I don't care how much it disrupted our, pre our present operations, we were going to do it. If he said communicate with the man of God every time, we communicate. Sow your seed amongst the waters, we sow our seed. He say, hey, you ought to fast, we take time to fast. Now we're going to do that more because we, we found out we've been kind of lacking in that area. So we're going to up that fasting. You know, he says, you know, pray. Seek me early. So we make it a point to seek him early. So everything we decided we see in the word, we're going to do it. Now, that's one level. The next level is to decide. That, that's what good, good children do. 
But we decided we wanted to be sons. That's the next level. Mature sons, mature in him. And we learned that we have to be, if we want to be sons, we've got to be led by his spirit. And I want to tell you now, there are a lot of pastors, a lot of missionaries, a lot of evangelists that don't have a clue on how to be led. They're very charismatic. They can put together a sermon better than I could ever put together one. Eloquent, they look the part on television. But if you want to go and ask them, what has the Lord said to you? They look at you crazy. They might be pastor 15, 20,000, but I guarantee you they, what do, what do you mean what the Lord, the Lord, what, what, no, what did you hear? And I'm telling you, we just read it in the book of John that the Lord speaks, we are his sheep, and we should hear. So I, I started testing him. I wanted to hear him on everything. So when it's time for me to go buy the children's shoes, I don't just rush out, go to finish line, and buy shoes. I do not do that because those shoes are expensive. I don't know why anybody pay that much for sneakers and your feet not making money, but that's, that's neither here nor there. That's your personal fashion thing. <laughs> but here, here's, here's what I'm saying. Okay, Lord, you know these kids need shoes. There are three of them that I'm still directly responsible for buying shoes. That oldest one got a job, she got to buy her own shoes. <laughs> Just kidding. But how, where, Father, show me. Show me. Let me tell you what he'll do. He'll say, oh, you got an hour. Run to Ross. You got an hour, run to Ross. Okay, I'm going to go to Ross. And sneakers, uh, sketch your hot tops that light up, because that's what they want, because I purpose to get them what they want. There'll be one size four sitting on the shelf for $12.99. Yeah. Yay, God. <laughs> See, because when they asked me for it, they were in rec room shoes and they were 56. No, God. Okay? Not, unless he says. And there have been times he said, just get them because you're doing something different. But most times he's telling me, hold on, let me show you because we've decided we're going to always have an envelope ready to sew. So I can't. Right. Now, here's what I found. A lot of times in the body of Christ, we're getting frustrated, we're giving out easy, we're giving up quick, because we keep, I say it all the time, I missed him, I miss God. I missed him, oh, I missed him. And I found out we lose a lot of time when we keep missing God. We lose a lot of time. So I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go look at Jesus. And how much did Jesus miss? Turn to John chapter eight. And verse 28. Says, then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things. So Jesus said, listen, I don't open my mouth and I don't talk and I don't say anything unless the Father has taught me or told me to say it. So I learned that, hey, Maybe I'll stop missing it so much if I stop doing things and saying things that the Father did not tell me to do, nor did he tell me to say. I mean, so that's the first step. If I'm going to hear his voice, I've got to do, decide that I'm going to put myself under the authority of God Almighty, and I'm going to put myself in a position to hear. Amen. Why? Because God's got some good things plan for us. Let's look at that. John chapter 10, that's our, our scripture. We're going to skip down to verse 9. He says, I am the door, and if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and out, and he will find pasture. I said, okay, Father, if I go in by you, if I make you the door, if I follow you, you're saying that I'll go in and out and I might find pasture. I will find pasture. So I said, okay, Father, what is pasture? Because, you know, we're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not country folk. We ain't raising sheep in the city here, you know? What does it mean that you say, I'll go in and I'll go out and I'll find pasture? I looked that word up, and that word pasture means somewhere to graze. It means somewhere where you'll be fed. He says there'll be somewhere, and you can look this up, 
where nothing will be missing that will allow you to enjoy the true life. That's what Pastor, you can look it up for yourself. Blue letter Bible. You will find everything you need. You will be lacking nothing that will lead you or allow you to lead the true life. So you're saying if I follow you and I come in the door by you, I'm never going to lack anything that will lead to the true life? Okay, Father, you got to, okay, wow. He said, watch this. It's always been my plan. Turn over to Jeremiah chapter 23. Always been his plan. Jeremiah chapter 23. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Here we go, sheep and pasture imagery again, right? Says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people, you have scattered my flock, driven them away, and not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doing, said the Lord. He says, but I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them, and bring them back to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. So God's plan for me, number one and number two, I must be fruitful and I must increase. That word increase is the Hebrew word rabba, which means I am to be or become much. I am to grow great. I am to multiply. Now, it's not talking about me having children. He says, I am to be fruitful. That means I am to bear fruit and I am to increase. I am to grow. I am to multiply. Then he says in verse 4, I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. Now look at the rest of my life. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Come on, get excited about that. He says, listen, God wants me to be fruitful. He wants me to increase. He doesn't want me to be afraid of anything. He doesn't want me to have any dismay. And he doesn't want me to lack anything. Lack nothing. That word dismay means to be broken, shattered, scared, or terrified. No more shattered dreams, no more shattered hopes, no more broken hearts, none of that stuff. God says, my plan for you is that you go in and out, you find pasture. That means nothing is going to be missing to you that will allow you to enjoy and have a true life. You're going to be fruitful. You're going to increase. Hallelujah. You're not going to fear anything. There's no reason for you to be dismayed, and you will lack nothing. Come on now, come on now, come on, y'all not excited enough for me about that. You will lack nothing. So I had to stop and I say, okay, God, how do I get this? He says, baby, you got to know my voice. Let's go back over our base script to John chapter 10. I got to know his voice. Verse 4 says, and when he brings out his sheep, he goes before them, so we're not going to outrun him, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. For they know his voice. That's the Greek word ido, E-I-D-O, for they know his voice. That means that they can perceive and discern his voice. Come on now. Listen, I know my kids. I know their voices. They could be in the middle of Chuck E. Cheese on the one time in their life that I'll probably take them on my own. And if my babies were to holler, I can pick out their voice. Why can I pick out their voice? Because I know their voice. I know their voices so well, I know when they're arguing for real and when they're playing. I know when they're crying because they're in pain or they're crying just because they want some attention. Why do I know that? Because I've spent time to perceive and to discern my children. 
And I'm telling you, if God is saying that I'm trying to get you to a place where you are fruitful, where you increase, hallelujah, where you won't fear anything, you won't be dismayed, and you won't lack anything, and all you have to do is get to know me, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, my sheep, they hear my voice. They follow me, and they know me. They know my, I can discern my voice. Mama Alberta got a revelation a while ago. I think this was last year. And she says, the Lord showed her that his people are not discerning. They can't perceive his voice. So all this crazy, wacky stuff going on on the, you know, the television networks, Christian folk talking crazy stuff right now. I'm going to just tell you, you cannot sin and be all right with God. I don't care what mega preacher tells you grace has got all that covered. No, the grace is your divine enablement to stand up against sin and to withstand it. Creflo can say it. Leroy can say it. Joseph Prince can say it. You cannot sin and keep going. Sorry. You've got to be able to discern his voice because I'm telling you, if you can't discern his voice, you will always be unfruitful, decreasing, hallelujah, scared of everything, full of dismay, and lacking everything. We got to know his voice. How can I know his voice? I got to spend time with him. I got to spend time with him. Let's, let's turn over to something else. I really want you to know this. Let's go to Psalm number 85. Come on, say it. Say, I want to know your voice. Let's look it up. Start at verse 8. It says, I will hear what the Lord will speak. Say it, say, I will hear, I will hear what, the Lord will speak. what the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. He says, but let them not turn back to their folly. So I will hear, Hebrew word shama. I will listen to, I will hear, I will obey, I will give heed to. So the moment we hear something from the Lord, we've got to say no, not just I heard you. Because that's what we've been doing in church. Come on, I ain't the only one been hitting and missing. Come on, that's what we've been doing. We hear him. We come to church and we hear. We, you know, we might get serious and fast during the month of April and we hear. He says, no, 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 no. I need you to start hearing me with an intent of doing what you've heard me say. Shama me. I want you to hear me with the intention of giving heed to what? No more casual listening. No more passive listening. You don't get to the pasture that way. Come on, see sheep, see sheep. Do you think sheep want to feed on dried up hay? No. Sheep like green grass. They like green pastures. Sheep, like, they rest in the arms of their shepherd. Why? Because all they have to do is follow him. He's going to, his job is to lead them to green pastures. So Father God says, listen, I sent you Jesus. He is your shepherd. He came to lead you right into green pasture. All you have to do is to hear his voice, follow him, and know him. All right, let's keep going in Psalm 85. So I will hear. I'll turn my page. I will hear what the Lord God will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, but let them not turn back to his folly. So I will hear what the Lord God will speak. That speak is the Hebrew word dabar, means what he will confess, what he will converse, what he will declare, what we, he will promise, what he will command, what he will sing. I want to hone in on that word promise. I'm telling you, if people from outside were to look at Christians here on the inside, they would think that this was a book of maybes. That maybe I'll do this for you. Maybe I'll save your children. Maybe I'll make you rich. Maybe I'll heal your body. If I, that's how we, maybe. But it is a book of promises. Everything he says 
is a promise. So we've got to say, Lord, I'm going to hear every promise that you speak. I'm going to hear everything you say with the intent of doing it. He says now to his people and to his saints. So who he's talking to? He's talking to the faithful ones. His people talk about the nation. The saints talk about the ones who are faithful. He says, but this, but let them not turn back to their folly. That turning back to folly, let's look at it over in the Amplified because that'll say it real plain. He says, verse 8 in the Amplified, he says, I will listen with expectancy to what God the Lord will say, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, those who are in right standing with him, but let them not turn again to self-confident folly. See, when I decide that I'm going to do it my way, it's foolishness. It's folly. You're playing around and you're not going to gain much ground. Listen, we've got to stop saying we know what to do. Well, I ain't never said that to God. Yeah, every time you make a decision and go and do something without talking to him, you've decided that your way is the best way. And hey, he just backs up and lets you do it. He has to. He just backs up and lets you do it. He says, but I'm interested in a people who will allow me to lead them to green pastures where nothing will be lacking that would allow them to lead the true life. Come on, we're going to keep proving it. Psalm number 95. Verse 7. It says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, Today, if you will hear his voice, now that today is the same today 5,000 years ago, it's the same today, today. When you read it, it's today. So whatever you need, if today you will hear, today. He says today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. Do not become stubborn. Come on now. Do not harden your heart. Hallelujah. I lost my place. There you go. There we go. Do not harden your heart as in the rebellion, as in the day of the trial in the wilderness, when your father tested me. They tried me, though they saw my work. Stubborn and rebelling, and they've seen what I can do. He says, for 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts. So we saw over in Psalm number 85, he says, listen, my people are messing up. They're becoming self-confident. They're trusting in what they can do. He's saying here in Psalm 95 that, listen, you can't hear my voice. You harden your heart. He says, and they have erred in the King James or gone astray in their hearts. I've gone astray in my heart. I said, going astray. He says that err is the Hebrew word ta'a, which means to wander, to abandon, to stagger, or to become intoxicated. He says, listen, if you'll hear my voice, don't harden your heart, don't become stubborn. He says, listen, don't do like my children of Israel did in the wilderness. I'm trying to take them to a promised land. But they keep becoming stubborn. They keep, you know, be rebelling. They won't listen to me. They won't do what I'm telling them to do. And he says, it's because they've erred or they've gone astray in their hearts. I said, God, how do we go astray? When we become intoxicated on the world, with the way the world does it, with their methods, with the way the world operates, yeah. hallelujah, with the way the world wants things to happen for them. Listen, we've got to see it in the word and believe the word and do it the way the word says. If God says, cast your bread, cast your bread. If he says you'll find it after many days, know that you will find it. Listen, we keep casting our bread out there in the world and ain't nothing coming back. He says, don't become intoxicated on the world. He says, today, if you will hear my voice, hear my voice, hear my voice, okay? He says, listen, they've erred in their hearts, they've gone astray, and they don't know my, word, my, my ways. He says, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. They will not enter my rest. They will not find pasture. They will not find pasture. 
they will always be in a condition of everything missing, everything lacking, and everything broken. Anybody ever been there before? Oh, yes. Not a great place to be in. But he's saying to us, listen, if you would just hear my voice. See, we got all these other voices going on. He says, no, 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 today, hear my voice. Now, why do I need the voice? Why do I need the voice? If you're telling me that the voice is going to do all of these great things, the voice has got to do something, though. Let's turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 36. This is Moses talking to the children of Israel. He says, out of heaven, he let you hear his voice. Out of heaven, he let you hear his voice. Why? That he might instruct you. That word instruct there is the word that means correction. He's going to speak to you so he can make those, those fine corrections that you need to have happen. He says, listen, he speaks, you hear, he uses his voice to discipline, to correct, to chasten and to admonish you. Yeah. So listen, a lot of times we get out there and we mess up. Yeah. We mess up. We think we're doing the right thing and we're getting so far, the water gets kind of murky. He says, but listen, if you'll stop long enough to hear my voice, I'll show you where you missed it. Right. He says, and we'll go ahead and we'll make those corrections so that you can get back on track. Amen? Amen. All right, let's look at another one. Let's go to Psalm number 32, verse 8. Psalm number 32, verse 8, he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. That instruct there is the word counsel. So God is going to correct. He's going to discipline. He's going to admonish us. He's going to chasten us. But with his voice, he's also going to counsel us. We need that counsel. That counsel means to give us insight, to teach us, to cause us to prosper. Here is the mistake we've been making. We've been taking counsel from the wrong people. We've been taking counsel from each other. And I'm gonna tell you, two folk in the same boat can't help each other out. I mean, if I'm broke, what I look like asking another broke joker what you think I ought to do with my money? who's already made it to the other side they can say hey well Jesus says listen if you'll hear my voice I'll lead you right to where you need to be where there's nothing missing nothing broken nothing lacking I'll give you peace shalom peace but we've got to get to a point man where we can hear him so that means God when I say I want to hear your voice that means I'm open to your correction I'm open to you telling me I ain't doing it right I'm open to you telling me I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Come on now. And I'm open to you counseling me. Here's the problem. We don't sit long enough for him to instruct our counsel. He says, listen, take time. Hear me. Okay, so the word's going to come. His voice is going to come. It's going to give correction. It's going to instruct me because there's somewhere God's trying to get me. Where is God trying to get me? He's trying to get me to pastures. What's the pasture all about? Come on. It's green. There's nothing lacking. I'm going to be fruitful. I'm going to increase. I'm not going to have any reason to fear. I'm not going to be dismayed, and I'm not lacking anything. Okay, so if he is God who says, I can do this for you, he forced me to look at myself and say, but why aren't you doing this? He says, because you're stubborn. You're no different than the children of Israel. You're stiff-necked, rebellious people. Now, that's a tough word to take, but it's a good word to take because if I go ahead and make the corrections, I'm now in a position to hear. Man, I was at uh, TJ Maxx shopping. You know, in the jewelry section, they have the counter, and then they have the tall piece. And there was something I wanted out of the tall cabinet. So I'm talking to the lady behind the cabinet, and as long as I was on this side of the shelf, she could hear me. 
and I could hear her. She would say, you want this watch right here? No, no, I don't want that watch. See, we couldn't communicate because there was something in the middle of us. There was something getting in the way. But the moment both of us stepped out and stepped over, we could have a clear dialogue. And I was standing right there in the middle of TJ Maxx and the Holy Spirit said, that's just how it goes with me. Anytime there's anything in the way that you're putting there that you won't allow or won't let me move or that you won't step out from, you can't hear my voice. And if you can't hear my voice, you cannot get what I have. It took the longest time to get the lady to see. I wanted the brown watch on the third shelf, three in. But it wasn't until I moved to the side where she could hear me and I could hear her, could she understand which one I wanted out of the case. Well, come on, it's the same way with God. As long as I got every other kind of voice in the way, I can't hear his voice. His voice is the voice we want to hear. Let's prove that. Turn over to Psalm number 92, I think it is. Mm -mm, that's not it. Where did I put it? I think it's 29. Let me see. There was a psalm I was reading this week in 92 or 29. Yep, 29. Psalm number 29. Listen to the voice we want to hear. It says, give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He says, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes the calf, makes also skip, makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. That's the voice we want to hear. The voice we want to hear is the voice that can make things happen. But I tell you, we're spending so much time hearing voices that have no power. America is completely consumed with the voice. Everybody tuning in to the voice. Who is the voice in America? Listen, y'all, listen. That stuff don't matter. It's a distraction that'll come in and will keep us entertained, dancing the samba while time keeps rolling on and keeps rolling on and keeps rolling on and keeps rolling on. And you look up and you're 25 and then you're 35 and then you're 55 and then you're 75 and then you're 85 and all of these promises have gone unmet. Why? Because I've been listening to that voice. I couldn't give a hoot about who can sing the devil music the best. Or even gospel, the voice. Who cares when I can't hear the voice that's going to make sure that I have nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking, that I'm going to be fruitful, and that I'm going to end. This is the voice I need. This is the voice I need. Listen, my husband is a great husband, great man of God. But when he's just being husband, I don't need that voice a whole lot. I enjoy that voice. Yeah. I enjoy fellowshipping with the voice. Yeah. But when I'm stuck and I need an answer, the voice I need is here. Now, I've got a wonderful thing going on. Because I get to take the man of God home with me. Yeah. Yeah. But here's what I'm telling you. God will talk to you because he said he would talk yeah. to you. He says the only requirements for me talking to you is that you be my sheep. You be my sheep. Not their sheep, not her sheep, not his sheep, not their sheep, his sheep. His sheep. Because I'm going to tell you, those voices will lead you to a pasture. Mm -hmm. 
they'll lead you somewhere. And you'll find out it's so full of poison and chemicals, it's going to kill your dead. But where God is trying to lead us, it's going to increase us. It's there is no hurt, no guile, no disguise, no nothing evil in God. He doesn't even, so when he tells you, I'm leading you to pasture, you've got to take every step toward his voice. And listen, forget about what you think might happen if you do it. That's the other voice. See, there are many antichrists in the world. They're already here. Why are they here? To unteach us everything that the Father has told us. I guarantee you, as soon as you sow a seed, you get in your car and here's what the Antichrist said. Now look at what you just did. You just sold your last $25 and look at your gas tank. You ain't got but a quarter tank of gas. Now how in the world you gonna make it the next week off a quarter tank? Who is that? The Antichrist. When God himself tells you, hallelujah, that when you cast your bread after many days, you're going to find it. He also says, hallelujah, Psalm, uh, Isaiah number 32, I just ran across this. Blessed are ye who sows beside many. Blessed are you who sow beside many. But I've got to shut out the other voices. So his voice is going to come. It's going to bring correction. And it's going to bring counsel something else it's going to do is it's going to guarantee God's presence. Let's look at Revelations chapter 3 verse 20. Oh God, I just want to feel you. I just want to know you're here. I mean, you hear all those crazy weepy songs. I'm going to tell you how to know he's here. Watch this. Revelations 3 verse 20. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He just knocking. He just knocking. He knocking. Oh, he knocking. Why is he knocking? Because he said he's knocking. He don't lie. He said he's knocking. All right. He says, and if anyone hears my voice, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door. So I've got to know he's knocking. That means I got to believe his word. No, he's knocking. I've got to go and hear his voice, and I've got to open the door. That word there, door, is the word thura, T-H-U-R-A. And that means it's going to open up to a place. The door will lead you to a place of prosperity. Amen. He says, listen, if you hear my voice, go ahead and open up the door. Guess what he's going to do? He says, I will come in. I will, you don't ever have to feel far from God. He's always knocking. He's always knocking. All I have to do is open the door and let him in. He says, I'm going to come in, and I will come in and dine with him and he with me. We are going to have fellowship. If I feel like I'm very far from God, that means I've gotten very far from his voice. And why can't I hear his voice? Because the door is closed. I've got to open the door. He's knocking and calling. Yeah. Open the door. Just open the door. How do I open the door, Pastor Kim? I don't know. Shh. Quiet down everything. Send the kids to bed. Bedtime is for parents. Kids can run off a little bit of sleep. They can do it. Send them to bed. Shut yourself off with God and say, Lord, I'm here. Your word says you are knocking. You are calling. I'm opening the door. Yes. Come in. Yes. Dine with me. Yes. Let's talk. Yes. He says if you draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh unto you. Yes. That's a promise. So as Christians, we should never, ever have this feeling that God is so far away. No, nope, he's not far away. You're far away. You've gotten far away. Now, Pastor Kim, come on, that's kind of No. Things enter in. I have to stop myself. I'll tell you the truth. When I get up in the morning, I like laundry wash. I like dishes. I like everything. I, when I leave the house, I want it done. I'll get up at 5 30 in the morning, wash machine going, sweep in the kitchen, you know, vacuum in the floor, and I have to literally say, Stop it. What are you doing? This stuff doesn't matter. Have you read your proverb yet? Have you prayed yet? Have you asked for the grace to go in that school and deal with all the little demons that are going to come across your, de your threshold? Come on now. Do the important things first. 
do the important things first. And the demons aren't necessarily the children. I have to deal with their parents. <laughs> they go to big demons. But, but hey, but listen, that's what's important. Because he'll all of a sudden make your day so light and so easy. You can get the laundry done. You can get the dishes done. You can get dinner started. Or he'll send an angel over to help you. Here's what I'm telling you, though. If we don't draw nigh to him, he won't draw nigh to us. We will not be able to hear his voice. And I'm going to tell you, when we can't hear his voice, we don't know what to do. So we keep making big mistakes costly mistakes, the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. And I'm going to tell you, no more time for that. I've lost too much time missing it. Oh, Lord, we missed it. Oh, Lord, we missed it. Even corporately, we've missed it. We've missed buildings. We've missed his voice. You stop and you look back, and all he says was you didn't spend enough time on that. Intercessors, 2014, more prayer, more prayer, more. Right, but how are we supposed to get more prayer? I don't know. You ask the Father. More prayer because we need these answers. Yes. Because every year that we miss him is another year we're lacking, we're unfruitful, and we're decreasing because you're never standing still. You're never standing still. If you're not gaining ground, you're losing ground. Come on now. Okay, so God wants us to increase, all right? Yes, yes. So who gets to hear? He says those of us who are his sheep. Let's put our eyes on that again in John chapter 10. Mm -hmm. Verses 4 and 5. He says, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger. So here's what I know, that the sheep hear, the sheep hear, the sheep hear, and the sheep follow. The sheep hear, and the sheep follow. Now, I already told you that hearing means that I hear with the intent of obeying, with the intent. So he says, there's a step that we miss a lot. He says, go back and get this. Let's look at John uh, chapter 10. Stay there. Verses 26 and 28. And I'll go back up to 22 just so we can keep it in context we know who he's speaking to. It says, now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Look at Jesus. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Here it is. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow them, and I give them eternal Zoe life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So not only do the sheep hear, and the sheep follow, the sheep hear with an intent to obey, but the sheep can't hear if they don't believe. And when we can't hear him on some things that we're struggling with, it's because we don't yet believe. See, if we really believed tithing kept the enemy at bay, if we really believed that, I'd never touch the tithe. I'd be bringing the tithe by. If I knew I was kind of crazy with money, I'd be bringing the tithe by as soon as I cashed my check. If I really believed that tithing was robbing God. But when we don't really believe that, we can't hear the voice on that. So the moment somebody even mentioned the word tithing, we just shut it off. My sheep hear, believe, and they follow. Who else? Let's look at John chapter 8, verse 47. Can you get that for me in the Message Bible? John 8, 47 in the message. 
Who else gets to hear? So we know the sheep get to hear. It says anyone on God's side, God's side listens to God's words. This is why you're not listening, because you're not on God's side. I was like, oh, God, really? He says, anyone on God's side. See, there are only two sides. There are only two kingdoms. There are only two sides. There are only two leaders of those sides, okay? So it says, anyone on God's side listens to God's word. So if I have a hard time listening to God's word, that's the Bible. That, you, you know, if I have a hard time listening to God's word. I just might not be on God's side. Now, that's easy to fix. But you got to deal with it. We got to deal with it. If I find that I have zero tolerance for the word of God, that means I have zero tolerance for God. And if I have zero tolerance for God, then I can't hear his voice. Let's stop faking it here. Come on now. I want to hear. No, you don't want to hear. Every time he tells you to do something, you got something to say. You got an excuse and a reason why you can't. Shut it up if you want the pasture. So we shouldn't keep talking about all of these things. We want, oh, I'm believing God for this, and I'm believing God. His voice is trying to get us there. So who hears? His sheep hear. And they won't listen to a stranger. Who's a stranger? Those belonging to another those who are not of one's family, an alien, an enemy. That's what a stranger is. They're not of the fold. Don't ever come tell me what somebody else said that contradict what my pastor said. Don't ever, you don't ever want to make that mistake. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever. Really, you should never do that. <laughs> See, because I know what God said in Jeremiah 23 about the shepherds he gives us. See, I know because... I'm not one of those lazy members. I'm going to go back and listen to it. It's in the car. It's on the phone. It's on the tablet. It's, in, it's on the CDs. I'm going to listen. It's on the website. It's, I'm going to listen to it. It's on YouTube. I'm going to watch it. So when I see it, and, I, and man, all this scripture, if anybody say the truth ain't in here, they'll lie. And the devil is their daddy. You can tell them I said so. Why? Because we're going, I mean, what other church uses this much scripture? All the homework is being done for us. All we have to do is get it in there till we believe it and step out and do it. And here's the truth. Go ahead and do some things without even having to believe it just because you know who said it. Oops. Okay, so who hears his voice? I don't listen to strangers. Let me help you. There are a lot of voices out there. There are a lot of voices out there. There are a lot of voices out there. There are a lot of strangers out there. There are a lot of aliens out there. Listen, be discerning. That's right. Know what you're hearing. That's right. If it don't line up with what you know the Bible says, then cast it off and turn the channel. I used to watch some of the stuff for entertainment. And God says, stop it. I'd much rather you sit with your Bible than to keep watching that. He says, now you might be laughing, but see, Tone. Seats on. It tickled me. I'm like, look at that nut. Seats on, though. Seats on. I gave him my ground for 22.2 minutes. 22 point, you know. Stop it. Why? Because his word says that seed go out. They find ground. They put down roots and they spring up. You really want that? See, you, here's what happened. You'll find yourself sitting in the quiet of your house questioning tithing. Question is it okay for you to have that glass of wine that you know you had to crucify because you knew what it used to do to you? But see, this new teaching tells you a glass of wine ain't going to do nothing to you. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me when Proverbs clearly tells me don't look long on that red stuff sparkling in that glass? Come on, it clearly says, I read it. But now you got preachers saying, hey, that's no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. You can have a wine. That's okay, it's good for your health. Listen, Welch's grape juice is just as good. And if you like an appeals form, it's called resveratrol. Take you one. But for goodness sake, stop. Because the Bible says it. Do I believe the Bible? Do I believe the Bible? I don't care who said it. Do I believe the Bible? My sheep, they hear, they obey, they believe my word. Those who of God believe his word and hear his voice. Who else hear his voice? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 32. I 
know I'm speaking fast, going kind of get you, but I'm going to get this all out today. <laughs> I'm just telling you now, so you're going to have to go back, listen to it, take your real player, slow it down so you can understand what I'm saying. But I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to get this all out today. Because we need his voice. Now I'm getting to the good stuff in a minute. Slow it down so you can understand. <laughs> Proverbs 3.32, 3.32, I love you too. It says, but uh, for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. That twisted joker is an abomination to the Lord. It says, but his secret counsel is with the upright. His secret counsel? Anybody know some of God's secrets? Come on, yes ma'am. See, every time we come in here, we're getting some of his secrets. Because if you want to go talk to some of your cousins, they don't know this. So your cousins don't know God needs you to be rich. Your cousins don't know that. You know, they just think, I'm all right. No, no, no. God, see, your cousins don't know that that debt ties you to a whole lot of evil. See, your see we're being re secrets are being revealed. But who are the secrets with? The secrets are with the upright. King James calls it the righteous. Okay? So who gets to hear his voice? The righteous. Amen. What does secret mean there? The counsel, the familiar converse. That means you know what he's saying to you, know his voice. Inti intimacy with God, those things are reserved for the righteous. Amen. So listen, I'm going to tell you like this. You get around some folk and they talk good Christianese on Saturday and Sunday, but you see them at work on Thursday or they tell you a crazy story, here's what you ought not do. You ought not listen to them because they're not very righteous. Oh, we're all righteous. God has made us. Yeah, but you got to stay in right standings. You got to decide that you're going to receive and take and have his righteousness. It's given. Amen. But you got to decide you want it. Now, if they're not righteous, don't let them come put no bug in your ear. I just want to tell you some revelation. No, you didn't get no revelation. And you just cussed out your husband last week. Go and fix that and then come back and tell me what he said. But really, we've got to become that serious about the words we receive. See, because a lot of folk listen to a lot of voices right up in here. A lot of folks still listen to a lot of voices right up in here. And confused about a whole bunch of stuff we shouldn't still. Do we have to once again lay the elementary things on? We don't have to keep going back over that, do we? Okay, shout out all those crazy voices. The righteous have the secrets. I just got a revelation. Tell me about your righteousness. Have you accepted your righteousness? You're done with sin. Who else gets to hear his voice? Those who are of the truth. Go to John chapter 18, verse 37. See, all this scripture, y'all know I ain't lying. Come on now, this ain't nothing but the truth. Oh, no, you interpret it. No, I ain't interpret I'm proving the Bible by the Bible. I told you he'll lead you to pasture. I showed it to you in the New Testament a couple times and in the Old Testament. He wants you in pasture. He wants us in pasture. I was watching, we were watching the channel, uh, the city channel. They were talking about this one apartment complex, but I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to offend nobody. But they were saying some stuff, and I remember sitting up in the bed saying, shit, nobody righteous be living in that. Now, the only reason you should be living in that is God gave you a word, and he told you he was going to use you to turn that thing around for the kingdom. But it's just some places the righteous ought not even live. Come on. Come on. If they refer to you like you not in the same zip code, you ought not live there. Unless the Lord has told you to. Why? Because he gives us green pasture. And if the pasture ain't green where you're living, it's time to trust God and go. Well, how are you telling me that? Because I know it to be the truth. All that grass we put down. We couldn't keep that grass. Up. <laughs> Thousands of dollars worth of grass. We just could not keep grass alive on that street. That ain't where God wanted his grass. Amen. Look what we do. <laughs> John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said to him, he talking to Jesus, you know, this is about the end. Are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly. Now, that ain't no Hollywood Jesus gets slick with leadership like that. <laughs> you said it right, true that, right? That I am a king. <laughs> but this 
cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world. Why did, he, why did he come into the world? He says that I should bear witness to the truth. And everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So if I don't hear his voice, then I got to ask myself, am I about truth? Or do I want to lie? Some folk want to lie. Just tell me it's going to work. Just, t- just, just don't tell me the truth. Just tell me it's going to work. See, that's what God was mad with the people in Jeremiah 23 about. See, then it was telling them everything is good, everything is cool, everything great. You can keep going that way. And God says, why did you tell them people that? That's a lie from the pit of hell. I never told you that. Yeah, people want to believe a lie. Listen, it's a lie. You, grace don't cover that mess. I'm going to just tell you. Shall we continue in seeing that grace may abound? God forbid. Now, that's the truth. Now, let's see what truth is. Uh, turn to John chapter 1. Yeah, y'all had Wednesday off. That's right. I just remember. I ain't in no rush. <laughs> John chapter 1, verse 14. We're tracking down what this truth is because those who are of the truth, they hear his voice. So what is truth? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, capital A. So we know we're talking about a big person here. Word is capitalized too. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. We know who that is. That's Jesus. Full of grace and truth. So who is truth? Jesus is truth. And Jesus is the what? Word. Word. So if A equals C and B equals C, then A must equal C or A equal B or something like that. But y'all know how I go. You've been to math class. All right? Amen. Community property or something like that. You know. So if the word is Jesus and the Jesus is truth, he's full of grace and truth. Those who hear the word, they're of Jesus. And those who hear the word who got Jesus, they're of truth. And the people who got truth, they hear his what? Voice. Let's prove it. Come on, let's keep going. John 17, 17. We're tracking down truth. See, when you go home with that fancy, nice little tablet you got for Christmas, you can go back over this and you can take notes on the side. Use that for more than Angry Birds, okay? Oh, amen. No, all this technology up here, all that money for Angry Birds? Yay. Okay. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So what did Jesus tell Pilate? Everybody who hears my word or hears the truth, they're of me, they hear my voice. Yeah, you get the gist. Well, what is truth? The word is truth. Jesus is truth. So if you can't hear his word, you can't hear his voice, and if you can't hear his voice, your pastures are dried up. Come on, y'all. Come on. Don't we want the good life? Are we tired of singing about the good life? We tired of singing about it, right? We tired of looking in magazines about it, right? Because it's all over. God says, if you just hear my voice, I'll give it to you. Amen. See those houses, that waterfront, all of that peace? Right. You seen the I saw the people who were at peace at Christmas time. Yeah. I saw them. Yeah. They was in the mall like this, yeah. making multiple trips to the car. Yeah. They weren't fretting by none. But us who was fretting, <laughs> we had our little list checking it twice. Not to see who naughty and nice, see if I got enough. <laughs> Take away three times five. Fit up, put that back. No. God wants us to not be lacking anything. Why? Because that's why he came. Come on, y'all. I feel a little bit of resistance. Come on. Listen, he wants us to have it. He wants us to have it. The only way we're going to have it is if we hear his voice. Let's shut out all the other voices. Yes. This is the last, is this the last Sunday of the year? Yes. This is the last Sunday. So before we go into 2014, and it's going to be great deliverance, listen, don't keep getting tangled up in your own foolishness. Right. Our own self-confident folly yes. keeps us locked into that stuff. We got to decide we're going to do things a little different. Yes. Now, you might have been doing great this year. So God says, just hear my voice so I can make some fine corrections. Yes. Kind of like taking a picture, you know? You got on your lens. It's in a, you know, you know about the lens with the, you know, 
camera with the lens. Not the dip, not the pull out your pocket camera. But you know, you got the big one, it turns. That's for course adjustment. You need the picture way out of focus. Now you can get it kind of sharp, but you want to be able to see the stripes in their shirt, right? right? So you gotta get the fine adjustment. And then you say, oh, I got the apple in their eye, that twinkle, I got the twinkle. I know it's in focus now. That's what God is trying to do for us. So he said, just hear my voice. My voice is going to lead you to the pasture. Not their voice. His voice is gonna lead you to green pasture. So that brings me to this. Let's look at this first, though. Deuteronomy 28, because I just want to make sure people want this, because I hear this scripture quoted a lot. But we, we say the latter part and don't say the, the most important part. Let's turn over to Deuteronomy 28. We love this section. Don't we love this? <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. He says, now it shall come to pass. Say now. now. That sounds just like today, right? right? It shall come to pass if you diligently obey. The voice. Obey the what? The voice. the voice of the Lord your God. Not just to hear him, diligently obey to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today. That the Lord your God will do what? Set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings. Well, what's the prerequisite for the blessings coming on me and overtaking me? Me diligently obeying his voice. And I can't obey his voice if I can't hear his voice. Come on. He says these blessings are going to overtake you. Why? Because we never say this part. We never say this part. So if you're not doing this, the blessings are not going to overtake you. I'm the one that's just going to tell the truth today. They're not going to overtake you. I don't care how much you confess it. You can have post-it note. You can paint it on the doorpost of your house. If you do not obey. He says they're going to overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be. In. Blessed. Why? Because you obey the voice. Because you obey the voice. Because you hear him. Not because you confessed it. Come on. Not because pastor said it, but it's because you obeyed the voice. Yes. So guaranteed ways to hear him. Call on him. Psalm number 91. This is a guaranteed way to hear his voice. Well, I want to hear him, Pastor Kim. You, you made your case like a Philadelphia lawyer. I want to hear him. Well, here's how I can guarantee that you hear him because he promised it. Uh, Psalm number 91, verse 15. He said it right here. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. So if I want to hear his voice, what I got to do? Call on him. Don't call on me. Come on now. Don't call on your other friend, because they're in the same boat. Listen, here's the, here's the truth. Now, my grandmama said it. My grandma, my grandma, she gone, uh, my other grandma, but she ain't lie. She said, birds are the same feather flock together. You don't never see no ultra-rich person hanging with a broke person, because they're uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable. You make me feel bad by having my money. And I make you feel bad because you don't have no money. So we used to be friends in high school, but now I'm uber wealthy, so I'm not calling you no more. Now you can hit me on Facebook, but I run with this one because we're, we're compatible because I don't feel bad. We got things in, we got commonality. Okay? Well, more than likely, if you line up your friends, the boat is pretty even. Because we stay with who we're comfortable with. People who shack and don't hang with people who marry. They don't. Shacking people don't hang with married people because they don't want you to be in that face about how you need to marry. And people who drink don't hang with people who don't drink because I don't want you to say nothing to me about my glass of wine with my steak. Okay, I'm just saying. So don't call on your friends. 
call on him. Amen. Why? He said he's going to answer. So if I want to hear his voice, I need to call on him. How do I call on him? Get out all the distractions so you can hear and he can hear. He's right there. He's just waiting on you to call. He said as soon as you call, I'm going to answer. That's a promise. Yeah. You can be calling on him in your heart. Where is that? Shante did it. It was in here. It was in here. Because she made up in her mind, listen, God, this, I'm, I'm coming up to your standard. That's, right. That's what you did. That's right. You know what she said? I'm not driving these streets with my car whining. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's God kind of talk. Yeah. You mean you, you telling me it ain't okay for your car to make all that noise? Oh, I'm down with that. Oh, I'm down with that. I'm going to show you what to do, baby. There you go. Because we're coming up to his way of thinking. See, before you just riding to be whining, you don't even care. Everybody know you come. But now something done changed on the inside. And she said, I'm not driving this street with all that noise. Come on. And see, when you change, now he talked to you on his level. I can talk to you about that because see, you talking like I like to talk. Try God. Go home and look at your pasture. Go home and look at your pasture. Try. Say, God, you like this? And let him talk. Now, don't go talking to your husband because he might not be there yet. That's right. He might not. No, go talking to your girlfriend because she might get a little jealous because you're talking crazy. Yeah. You go sit and say, God, you like this pasture? Do you like this pasture? Now, if you got dead on him, I'm already tell you he don't like it. Yeah. He don't like it. I'm going to just tell you the truth. I don't care. Huh? Listen, don't try to feel good about it. He hates debt. He don't want his people enslaved. He sent Moses to get his people out of slavery. You think he want us back in slavery? All that sojourn of truth did, and we right back slaves. <laughs> Running all through the Underground Railroad to set us free, and we done made ourselves slaves to Chase Bank. Ain't that some crap? We are slaves. Everybody talking about the white man. We slave to the, to the card master man. <laughs> MasterCard. That's why it's MasterCard, because he's a doggone master. <laughs> Call on it. Call on him. Call on him, and he will answer. Yes. Call on him. Proverbs 3, that's why it's so beautiful. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will. How is he going to direct your path? He's going to give you an answer. He's going to say, no, I don't like that. No, we can work on that. No, no, I don't really, I don't care. Look out the window. I like Garden of Eden kind of conditions and no, baby, no, this, this ain't, no. Come on up a little higher. Call on him, he will answer. That's a promise. Then he says, I'm going to do what? I will be with him in trouble. Look at these promises. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Why? All because you called on him. So call on him. Open the door to him. That door, Thura, I said it wrong the last time. That word Thura, T-H-U-R-A, means the conditions which must be met or complied with in order to be received into the kingdom of God. See, the grace people have a hard time with that. Revelations 3.20, remember? I stand at the door and I knock. I'm at the door and I'm knocking. And if you open the door, I will come in. That word door is thura. You know, pull it up on that expensive phone. And you'll see T-H-U-R-A means conditions which must be complied with in order to be received into the kingdom of God. There's some things we're going to have to do, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. There are conditions that are going to have to be met. He already told you, you're going to have to be a sheep. You're going to have to allow him to be your shepherd. Stop being your own shepherd. You done led yourself to some crazy places. Listen, I was my own shepherd. I was my own shepherd. I'm going to show you how God tried to talk to me. God told me when I got ready to go off to college, college students, y'all better listen to me. My daddy came to me and said, baby girl, at that time I was shortcake, shortcake, go to U.S. sales somewhere I know I got all the money for it. Yeah. See, he had three years of Spelman. That was some crazy money, and I repent of that. I spent all that man money. But I'm going to take care of me, then. I'm going to take care of him. Um, <laughs> he said, go to U.S. sales. The voice of the Lord came to me. See, I ain't know about the voice because my Baptist 
preacher, he didn't tell me I could hear the voice of God. Even though we were singing, he talks with me and he walks with me. We were singing that song and he tells me I'm his own and the voice I hear falling on my ear. He didn't tell me I could really hear him, but I really heard him. He said, go to USF and I'll pay for it. I'll buy you a car. At that time, I wanted a Cranberry Red Honda Accord, EX with leather interior. He said, I'll go get it for you. Go to USF. I've got to go to Atlanta. I've got to go to... <laughs> now, he paid for those first three years. Mama kept in room and board for the last three years in, in Washington, D.C. My daddy was done paying tuition. Here I am, $25,000 later, still paying. Don't talk about the 15 we already paid off. I think the voice was trying to get me to green pasture. Listen to me. It's called an undergraduate degree, and it gets you nothing. It gets you a glorified secretarial position. That's all a BS will get you. Oh, I'm going into engineering. BS in engineering? What I mean? What that mean? You know why it don't mean nothing? Because Raj Patel got a master's and a PhD in engineering. Now, who you think they're going to pay? <laughs> I did it. Two bachelors. Broke. Huh. But I'm listening to the voice of God now, and I'm coming out. But I'm going to tell you, it gets costly. Not listening gets real costly. Oh, I could pay it off because I figure if I come out, I'm going to be making $50,000 and them show me your 50. And I say, okay, you bad. Ain't nobody making 50 these days. Oh, the police officers, I heard them on the radio station. They're giving them 40, they giving them um, 42,000. They're starting them with 42,000. Yeah, if you want to risk your life every night. Yeah, St. Pete College is a good choice. <clears throat> Lest the Lord says so. And when the Lord says so, he provides. So the moment you're thinking about getting a loan, it wasn't the Lord. The moment you think about getting a loan, it wasn't the Lord. Pack your bags and come on home, because I'm going to tell you, student loans are not designed for you to ever pay them off. If I walk out the payments, I will be 80 years old, still paying Sally Mae. You better listen to me now. If you ain't got the money, and I say this too, because everybody say, well, that's okay, because I got grant money. That ain't a government job. Government broke right now trying to educate children. They can't afford to educate. When you could work and go to St. Pete College and pay your tuition, oh, okay, $300 a class, that sounds pretty good to me. But amen, that's not what I'm here to talk about. So guaranteed ways to hear. Call on him, open the door to him. And decide to hear. We read that in Psalm 85. I will hear what the Lord will speak. I will hear. Before the man of God speaks, we should say that. I will hear what the Lord will speak. Why? Why? Discerning the voice. Let's get to that because I told you. You hear his voice all the time. See, I'm a child development specialist. Don't ever call me a preschool teacher or daycare worker because that's an insult. I'm a child development specialist. You don't spend that much time with kids and not know how they go. See, listen, they crawl, right? Well, first they just lay there. Put them on the floor and just watch them lay there. Just, they, that's all they're going to do is lay there. They ain't going nowhere. Just, they lay there. Put them on a pallet. They lay there. Then after a while, they'll start to scoot. And then they'll start to crawl. And then they'll pull up. Then they'll walk. Then they'll run. Then they'll gallop. The last thing that they do in, in growth mode is skip. That's the last thing. When your child can skip, they're ready for kindergarten. If they can't skip, <laughs> Candace, don't go home and make that baby skip. <laughs> you skip, skip. No, no. No, but they'll do it. And so we have, we've seen some little kids that skip, you know, early, but, but that's how they develop in their growth mode in their large body movement. That's how they're going to develop. Okay? Here's how we develop in discerning the voice of the Lord. The first step is hear your parents. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hear your parents. Listen, don't tell me you can hear God and you can't hear your mama. Use a lie from the pit of hell, and I ain't scared to tell you. No, no. Proper development is I can obey my parents. 
well, you don't understand my upbringing. Nah, 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 nah. That's all right. But let's deal with now. Where's your mama now? Because, see, she's had a lot of experience. Your daddy's had a lot of experience, and now they can tell you some stuff. Go ahead and listen. If they tell you you need to tear their little tails up, you need to tear their little tails up. Yeah. Listen. Oh, no, my baby just fine. They're telling you you need to tear their tail up. You better go ahead and tear their tail up. Right. That means that's, that's cold for spank their legs. <laughs> you know, because they know things. If they tell you, don't laugh at that. That ain't funny. Don't laugh at it. If they come to your house and they say, now, baby, you need to, you need to go ahead and start making your bed up every day. Go ahead and make your bed up. And this is my house. Oh, no, 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 no. See, because you're not ready to hear the voice of God. Well, you are hearing the voice of God, and you're just rebelling. Because when your parents speak, let's prove it, Proverbs chapter 1, because he wouldn't have said all this in the Bible if it ain't the truth. Yeah, just like your, um, the voice of Jesus will get you to green pastures. Look at where your parents will get you. You know why I got a good husband? Because I listen to my mom and daddy. I'm going to tell you the truth. There was some you let them take you to the movies. There was some you never let come around the house. There was some that was good for a cheeseburger. But when it came time to marry, my daddy will not approve of you. Keep going. My daddy will not. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't even oh, lose my number. Thank you for breaking my heart. No, my daddy can't. Oh, no, you can't come. No, you can't come. That was just fun. That was just fun. That was just crazy. But, oh, no, you can't. Because they had standards. Yeah, they, you don't let them date anybody. Bring that mess home to me and just say that. Just say it. You can't bring that home to me. He don't own a belt. You can't bring that home to me. He got earrings. You can't bring that home to me. He got tattoos. You can't bring that home to me. Who is that on your? No, can't bring that home to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm working on something. No. 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 He don't listen to his mom and daddy. He moved out at 17. No, you can't bring that home to me. No, because he'll have you rebellious. Oof. Thank you, Jesus, because the 18-year-old girl, you better know who you better bring home to me. <laughs> All right, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. You better know. Don't, uh-uh. Who that calling you? Girl, you saw him? Oh, no. I'm sorry. He got dreads. No, he can't come on to me. Good haircut for, oh, Pastor Kim, you can't say that. That's just how I feel about it, so whatever. Uh, Proverbs 1, verses 8 and 9. My son. My son. Hear the instruction of your father. And do not forsake the law of your mother. Mommies lay down the laws daddies teach. I ain't got time to do all that teaching. I got to wash. I just holler it through the house. You better do with it. Your dad will take you around outside and talk to you about why. I just say do it. That's what the Bible says. Dad is instruct. Daddy, yeah, daddy correct and guide and do all that there. Mama just lay down the law. This is how it's going to be. This is just how it's going to be. Why? For they will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about my neck about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Yada, 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 yada. But listen to your parents. He starts off Proverbs like that. Now Solomon is a wise man, right? Yeah. Listen to your mama and your daddy. Why? They're the voice of the Lord. Turn over to chapter 2. Mm -hmm. All these grown-ups who don't listen to their parents. That's, that, don't tell me you listen to the pastor and you don't listen to your parents. That's that, daddy. Oof. Oof. My mama ain't saved. So what, 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 what? Is she your mama? Is she your mama? Oh, okay, I'm just checking. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to hear, to incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom. But we start there. My son, if you receive my words, all of that outlined in chapter 2, you can have it. My son, if you will hear my words. My son, if you will hear my words. Daughters included, if you will hear my words. 
I'll make you beautiful. Obedient girls get, amen, let's go ahead. Turn over to chapter three. <laughs> chapter three, verses one and two. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. My son, if you do not forget my law, don't let your heart forget my commandments. My son, you will have a long life. Period. Why Bobo got killed? Bobo probably don't listen to mom and daddy. Because mom and daddy probably told Bobo you shouldn't be running with them. Because mama knew what chapter one said. If you run with a fool, you're going to get caught up in their foolish mess. That's what mama said. Mama said, daddy's long life. Long life. One more, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. That's the good kind of life. If we can hear God speaking through our parents. Well, I don't hear from God. Have you heard from your parent lately? Anything your mom and dad have told you that you have not yet done, go back to that. Because that God was talking to you. God was talking to you. Okay, so first step, I got to hear my parents. See, everybody got this, oh, I heard from the Holy Ghost, you can't hear from your mama? Oh, hold on for a second. Hold on. Okay, now we're going to hear from our pastors. Let's turn over to chapter 23. How does God talk? Yes, he will talk with you directly. Sure, in your private time, yes, he will. But he also talks through your parents. Yeah. What did I say, Jeremiah? Proverbs, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 23, I'm sorry. Let's look at verse 4. Now, remember he talked about wanting us to be in pastures and wanting to do all this for us. Let's see how he's going to do it. He says, I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them, and they're not going to fear anymore, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. So the shepherds are going to come, and they're going to feed you. Our shepherds come, and they feed you, not with fried chicken and yellow rice. They come and they feed you the voice of the Lord. That word for shepherd there is the word ra'ah, R-A apostrophe A-H. It means to tend to. It means to shepherd. It means to cause to graze. It means to lead to pasture. So if we want to get to a point in our lives where we have nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, we're fruitful, we're increasing, we're not afraid of anything, we lack none of the good things we need to live a true life, then we've got to start listening to our pastor. He opened the message up with that. He said, while he was doing praise and worship, the Lord said to him, you got to start doing what you hear him say. Now there is the scriptural proof for it. God says, I will set up shepherds. I will give you pastors. I will set them up to feed you, to get you out to pasture. That's how you're going to get to this life. Amen. Why? Because that's how God set it up. Because we don't know. We need the voice to get us to the pasture. What voice is he going to use? He's going to use our parents, amen, but he's also going to use our pastor. He's going to use, so whatever he says, do it. That sounds just like what G, uh, Mary told them at the Feast of Cana. Yeah. Remember that? They ran out of wine. They were lacking something. Yes, that's right. Mary stepped over into the role of a prophetess, didn't she? Yeah. And she said, listen, Jesus was being funny at the beginning. He said, mama, what you doing, lady? My time has not yet come. She paid him no mind. What did she say? Whatever you hear him say, do it. Well, that's what we're saying today. Whatever you hear him say, do it. If he's your shepherd. See, if he's your shepherd, you hear his voice. If you can't hear his voice, he's not your shepherd. Did she just say that? Yes. My sheep 
they hear my voice. How does he speak? Through your shepherd. If you can't hear your shepherd, he tell you something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who he think he is? Well, I'm telling you who he think he is. He's the set shepherd of this house. He is the set shepherd of this house. God says that he will set him up. If you hear his voice, you'll get to pasture. If you find you're not getting to pasture, you need to go back and say, have I been listening to pastor? So Sister Carolyn said she went out and tried it. She said, he told this thing, let me go do it. People tracking her down, going from job to job. People lose interest and they trying to release something. If I got to look for you, I'll forget it. Yeah, but come on. If he says it, do it. That's how you get out of fearing and lacking. Amen? Amen. Let's move further in that scripture. Uh, verse 16, chapter 23, verse 16. Yep. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They make you worthless. Well, how do you know they make you worthless? They ain't doing nothing that make any better. I'm not, I'm doing what they say doing and it ain't working out. Uh, they speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. So when the prophet speaks, they aren't speaking what's from the mouth of the Lord. How do you know a prophet is a true prophet? When what they speak, it comes to pass. If you don't see it in their life, it's not coming to pass. If you're not seeing it in your life, then they was lying. Here's what I know. Here's what I know. That everything that has been prophesied in this house, in some shape, way, or form, it's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. I'm watching it bud. I'm watching it bring forth. Hey, how do you know? Go listen to them. That's why they're on the website. So we can familiarize ourselves with what God has said. Amen? So we listen to our parents. We listen to our pastors. They're going to get us to the pasture. He'll get you there if you listen. Well, you feel like you're far off? I'm going to say it again. Go listen. Well, I've been listening. No, come on, y'all. we got to stop lying to each other. Come on. And you say, Pastor Kim, you can't be calling people a liar. Well, okay, here's how I'll say it. We might not be totally telling the 100% truth. Well, because why are you saying that? I mean, come on now. It's called, it's called technology. Come on now. It's called technology. I'm going to let everybody in on everything. He knows. You know, media know when you skip through the email. I don't feel like reading that. Do not read. They, they know when you skip past the email. They know who clicked on the video and watched it. YouTube, every view, they show how many views. Now, if it's a hundred of us in here, and we really listening to these messages over and over again, we can't have 16 views on damn message, and he trying to get us to pasture. You ain't trying to go to pasture. Self-confident folly. You think you know what you're doing, and I'm here to tell you, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Because if you knew, listen, this is me. I'm not fussing at y'all, because I had to have this conversation with myself, and I've shared this before. I had to finally tell myself, Kimberly, if you knew so much, you'd be a whole lot further ahead. I was smart in the world system. Dumb in God. Dumb in hearing his voice and being obedient to his voice and opening the door to him. Ignorant of the things of God. Smart in the world. I believe there ain't no test. Listen, if I want to be a contractor, I believe I could take the test and do it. I just, I just, I got that kind of confidence. I got that kind of, I don't go to preschool. I ain't know nobody no preschool teacher kids. People come in and ask us, ask the staff. They come in and say, y'all been to training on how to, no, we ain't been to no training. Girl, the Holy Ghost have to tell us this. Because cause we don't, listen, y'all, come on. In God, I was ignorant. But when I decided I was going to hear his voice, all of a sudden, stuff started making, how did I miss that? How did I miss that? He ain't talking about sheep. You know, you see the little posters in your Baptist Sunday school class of all these sheep. He talking to me. He trying to get me to pasture. Listen, don't play like I'm the only one, because if we really believed that, we'd have been doing We thought he was really talking about sheep, and really he was a shepherd, and that's why they always draw Jesus with a staff in his hand with a whole bunch of sheep. 
They really should draw it with pictures of you and I standing behind him, him leading us to green patches. We're ignorant of the things of God. Come on now. Come on. I wouldn't have been taking Claret in all them years if I knew God was a healer. I didn't know. But I knew which decongestant to take, which two to mix. I knew the pharmacokinetics of each one. I knew it was okay to take Motrin and Tylenol at the same time because they have two different pharmacokinetic paths. Smart in the world. Yeah. Ignorant to God because God said that I'll heal you. I'll put none of these diseases. If you hearken to my voice. Read that Exodus 15. He says, if you hearken to my voice, I won't put none of the diseases I put on Egypt, Egypt on you. Come on, I had to become dumb in order to hear. I had to become a sheep. Sheep don't talk back. Sheep don't reason. The, the shepherd opened the door to the gate, they follow him. That's all. They're just looking for grace. They're so dumb to follow him off the edge of a cliff. Well, come on, y'all. If we were so smart, there's no way in the world a working person should have had as much debt as I had, but in the world that was smart. In the world, that was smart. But you get in God, you find out that that debt is dumb. It made me a slave. Come on now. We got to hear his voice. My sheep, they hear my voice. Now, the last thing before I sit down, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Because this is one thing we keep doing. Well, I am. I hear the voices. Yeah, you're not hearing the right voices. I said, hear your parents. See, I don't play, play, play mamas. I don't play that in my house. My daughters don't have no play, play mamas. Ain't nobody who, who pretend raise them. I don't play that. I don't have all them voices in my house. I don't have all those voices in my house. Aunties and all them, they don't come and tell me how to do all them. No, uh, ain't nobody discipling my children. I'm their disciple. They don't need no disciple. Why? Because you get all those voices in your house and you're trying to direct your child along the path and they got all these people pulling them all over. No. It, you heard it from me. Parenting advice. Don't give no, they don't play play mama. That's my baby God mama. What is, what is, what is, what is, what is that? If I die, if I die, they got a grandma. They got a daddy. They got uncles. All those voices. Too many voices. Oh, I got this is my spiritual mom. Let me help everybody with their spiritual mom and daddy. If God gave you parents via one seed, your spiritual parents are one seed. You can't have all these spiritual parents. <laughs> Y'all, these spiritual daddies and spiritual mamas. You my spirit. No, I ain't your spiritual nothing if they're in this house. I ain't your spiritual nothing. Yeah, because you got too many voices. You're listening to everybody. And when you, you get confused, I'm going to prove it to you. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to prove it. Mm. This is a charge to the past. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince. Rebuke. I ain't like how she said that. Rebuke. Exhort. Lift them up. Come on. With long suffering and teaching. Go home with all these scriptures. I did the hard part for you. For the time will come, and we're in this time, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Because of your own desires, your itching ears, you'll go get your own teachers. And not the one that God set up over you. And what's going to happen? Your ears will be turned away from truth. God gives us our pastors. We don't go get our teachers. So here's, here's here. I'm going to help you. In these times, we know people are not going to endure sound doctrine. 
If your pastor don't listen to them, you shouldn't be listening to them. All that stuff we downloading on YouTube and downloading, I'm telling you now, it's going to lead you astray from the truth. Here's how you know you've been laid, uh, led away from the truth. Here's your litmus test. I use this for me. It's the end of the year. It's time to tally up. Amen? If I've been unfruitful, if I have not increased, if I have fear of anything, if I'm dismayed about anything, and if I'm lacking anything, then somewhere I have not heard the voice. That's the litmus test. That's how I'm going to know whether or not what I'm listening to has been helping. Now, here's what we're going to have to say. First of all, what have I been listening to? And let's be honest. If we know we've not been spending time with this word, 2014, year of deliverance, the only way you're going to come out is by his voice. He said it. I will lead them out. That's right. So I got to say, okay, God, I want to hear your voice. I will hear what you will speak. Turn up on your pastor. Get his word on your phone, on your tablet, on your every, everything you get. Because we got a lot of stuff. Yes. Put it on something. But you got to hear this word. Why? Because that's the word for you. You're sheep of this flock. Any word outside of what's been allowed in by this shepherd is enemy word. You can't say that. You can't. Yeah. He says, my sheep. Don't hear strangers. They don't hear the enemy. They don't hear aliens. So if he don't listen to them, oh, but they sound so good on TV. Yeah, y'all heard the 22 minutes they wanted you to hear. Get the whole message and hear what they're teaching. You'll find they're leading you away from truth. People who we adore, we like them. We enjoy listening to them. We had to cut them off. Joseph Prince had to, well, he was never, I could never get my mind around. He got to go. Creflo has erred from the truth. Sorry. He turned. Hey, no. No. Be discerning. Line it up with what you've heard. The only way you're going to know truth is to get in the truth. Get in the truth. Take these scriptures. Go back over them. Look at them over and over and over again. And ask yourself, am I heaping to myself people who are saying what I want to hear? Did I want to hear that? No, I didn't want to hear that, Pastor. That he does eight ways to cast bread. No. Did I want to hear back up on my life and leave some margin? Who wanted to hear that? Who wanted to hear back up a little bit? Well, he said it. So now when you go to the grocery store, if you normally spend $2.50, back up $25. You don't need all them cookies and chips. No way. Back up a little bit. Take that $25 and sow it. And at the end of the next year, see what happens. I guarantee you, you will find that you've become fruitful. You've, I don't want to hear nothing about tithing. You better hear about tithing. It's truth. There are people on TV saying don't tithe no more. That's under the law. Are you kidding me? When did he say do away with the law? He didn't say that. Hey, we've got to become discerning. Yes. Yes. We've got to hear his voice only way I'm going to hear his voice is I, I begin to spend enough time with him that I can pick his voice out of a crowd. I can pick his voice out. Mamas, y'all know what I'm talking You can hear your baby's voice. I don't care who's around. You can hear your baby's voice. So guess what? We by now should be able to hear our God's voice. And if you can't, I just showed you how. Go back over it. Not because I taught it. Who are I? Whatever. Go back over it till you can pick his voice out. When something comes in, you sift it and say, mm, that ain't right. Discard it. Get on to the truth. Get on to the truth. Because God wants us to live in green pastures. Amen. Can we say amen to that? Come on, get to your feet. Come on. Come on. We want to hear. He wants us in green pastures. We've gone too many, I just know this, too many years without. Come on. Tired of coming up short? Tired of not having enough? Tired of being the outreach? 
Man, when we got that revelation, I'm not your outreach. I'm the one who reaches out, but I'm not the outreach. Well, how do you change that? Hear his voice and let him lead you to the point where you have more than enough, that you're not lacking any good thing. Amen? Amen. Lord God, we thank you for these, your people. Father, we say now that we will hear what you will speak, Father. We know you've been speaking. We know you've been speaking. We can't deny that because your word said it. You said, behold, you stand at the door. You're calling to us. You're knocking, Father. We decide right now that we're going to open the door to you. Father, we're not wrestling with the word. We're not wrestling with truth. We're not wrestling with you, Father. We've decided, Father, to make you our shepherd and to allow you to lead us to green pastures. We say what David said to the Lord. He is our shepherd. And we shall not want, we shall not lack any good thing. Thank you, Father, that you're getting us to the point where we have more than enough to meet the needs of all of those you sent to us. Thank you that we are of those who open our hands and say, take whatever you need. We know that the only way we can do that, Father, is if we hear your voice. So, Father, we say we, your people, we hear. We hear, Father. We thank you for this house. We thank you for the shepherd you've stationed over this house who teaches us truth, Father. We know how we've increased. We know how we've prospered because of what we've heard in this house. Father, we say strengthen him for this coming year that he may continue to declare your truth and your word. Father, right now we thank you for the hedge that's around him. Hallelujah. The enemy cannot come nigh him. We thank you, Father, that his mouth is full of truth. And we declare that in this house we are good ground. And Father, you can trust us to care for this entire region. You said that we're the fingerprint of the Acts 2 church, Father. You said, hallelujah, you said it. So we believe now that we have all things in common and that the church grows in Jesus' name. Be blessed in Jesus' name, amen. Be 